now pleased to represent, uh, to recognize uh, the gentleman from California, a former AUSA, Mr. Liu. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. I'm super excited uh, that you uh, called this hearing. My uh, office and I have been working on facial recognition uh, for over two years. The reason it's taken so long is, as the chairwoman has aptly stated, uh, it is a can of worms. Uh, when you look at this issue, it can get very complicated. Uh, we have worked on legislation that is essentially complete now. It basically requires a warrant uh, for most cases of the use of facial recognition technology. It sets auditing and bias testing standards. It requires reporting. It prohibits facial recognition technology uh, for most First Amendment protected activity a number of other provisions. Uh, we're going to circulate that legislation to the members of this committee, both Democrats and Republicans, uh, for your review and comment and, and co-authorship. Uh, so thank you, uh, Chairwoman Lee, for, for this hearing. My first question goes to uh, Professor uh, Lauren. As we already know from this hearing, facial recognition technology implicates the first, fourth, and fifth amendments. I want to talk about the Equal Protection Clause. Uh, because there is this disparity and accuracy uh, in terms of the color of your skin. Uh, would it also be an equal protection violation if we had government agencies deploy this knowing that similarly situated people are being treated differently in terms of surveillance? So thank you very much for the question. I think that um, in answering the question, I want to sort of um, distinguish between <laughs> constitutional doctrine as it stands and um, maybe a more intuitive sense of what is rightfully understood to be constitutionally problematic. <laughs> so I think the challenge with using the Equal Protection Clause and the doctrine, or, doctrine, or, doctrine around it to get at these issues of bias in uh, facial recognition is that existing Supreme Court doctrine requires that essentially discriminatory intent be proved in order for state action to be deemed to be a violation of the Equal Protection Clause. Um, and, and that presents a hurdle when one is working with evidence of disparate impact, right? Um, there's an evidentiary gap often in getting from the state realizes there's this disparity to the, dis the state wants to discriminate on the basis of race or on the basis of sex. Um, and that has been a real difficulty in using the courts to get at these problems of disparity. Now, that doesn't mean <laughs> that it wouldn't be understandable, appropriate for Congress to say, we see a problem um, in these disparities and want to legislate to require that, uh, that disparities themselves um, be sufficient basis for, for limiting uh, the use of technology, et cetera. Of course, one needs to think about what the hook would be for that in terms of um, uh, Section 5 or the Commerce Clause or something along those lines. But um, I think that existing doctrine presents a challenge because of this requirement of discriminatory intent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, my next question goes to Professor Friedman. Uh, uh, first of all, let me take a step back and say I do agree with Dr. Alexander and, and Mr. Toman, that uh, we can't just ban this technology. If you look at the course of human history, nearly impossible to ban technology, uh, but we can regulate it. And uh, Professor Freeman, because there's so many different iterations and possible uses and situations for facial recognition technology, uh, what do you think about imposing a warrant requirement that can actually take into account all the different particularized factors uh, before deciding whether any any specific case uh, we would use facial recognition technology. Thank you for the question, uh, and I, you know, I just want to make a comment about the ban versus moratorium or strategic pause point, which is as I think everybody's recognizing we got the cart out ahead of the horse here, and that's the <laughs> problem. And so regulation is the only shot we have of getting the horse back out in front. Uh, you know. Warrant requirements are useful in some circumstances and not others, for ex and it depends on the use case for the technology. So for example, uh, if the use case is identification, which is what most agencies are doing right now, they take a probe photo and they compare it to a database, uh, a warrant requirement makes sense, uh, but only to get permission to use the technology because there is a reasonable belief that the photo that you've got is somebody that is suspected of a crime that is permitted 
uh, under the statute. And, and I, for one, would only allow the use of facial recognition for very serious crimes. Uh, so that is a use uh, of the warrant that makes sense. Uh, but you know, the warrant can't tell you, for example, that a particular individual committed the crime. It's just to use the technology. Great, thank you. I see my time is up and I yield back. Well, this time has expired. Um, it's, I think we have uh, present with us, uh,